Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, export raster pixel values into a text file so you can plot them, uh, make them into a histogram or a distribution. So here's our workflow. Uh, first we're going to create a masked temperature raster. Then we're going to use the raster layer unique values report tool to export the pixel values into a text file. And then I'm going to show you how to create a cumulative area plot in Excel. If you're watching this video just to learn which tool to use, you should probably just skip ahead to this tool. It's very self-explanatory and it lets you export uh, raster pixel values into a text file. But if you're in my class, uh, stay tuned and we're gonna, gonna work through all these steps. So we'll go into QGIS. Um, recall that we now have uh, a binary mask that shows uh, water pixels as one and land pixels as zero. The water pixels delineate Lake Powell and in previous video we estimated the area of Lake Powell. Um, now I want to give an example. Imagine we wanted to study the temperatures of Lake Powell. Perhaps you are a fish ecologist and you want to know what the water temperature is. Or perhaps you're doing a hydrologic budget and you want to estimate evaporative losses. So you want to know what the air temperature is um, at different parts of Lake Powell. So uh, what we're going to do here is bring in a temperature raster, then we're going to multiply it by the mask, and then we're going to extract those temperature values. So uh, first thing first, we'll go to add data and we'll navigate into the tutorial folder that you downloaded under data temperature. We have this uh, Lake Powell temperature raster. Um, so we'll hit that and we'll add it. Um, and here it is. You can see uh, low values are dark. Those are cool, cold areas up at high elevation and the river valleys tend to be hotter. Uh, those hotter temperatures are shown as light colors. Okay, so, um, but let's say we only wanna extract temperatures for the, the Lake Powell water pixels, okay? So we're just gonna use the same trick we did before, which is go into raster calculator and multiply our mask, our binary mask, by our temperature our July temperature raster. We always have to tell it what to use as a reference layer. Importantly, we're gonna use the binary mask as the reference layer. This is very important this time because the temperature raster actually has a different extent and a different pixel size. So by specifying the binary mask as our reference layer, we're telling raster calculator, hey, multiply these two things by each other, but only keep the values for the binary layer um, and use the pixel size and extent of the binary layer. All right, here we go, we'll hit run. Okay, so that finished and I'm gonna turn off the big one. And you can see this is actually our output. It looks uh, displayed a little bit funny right now. So let's go into properties, symbology and we'll go to single band pseudo color. We'll change the minimum value to 10 just to get a little better contrast stretch on it and hit apply. And you can see now that uh, we've got a little bit of a color ramp. So our uh, highest temperatures are in the lighter colors and our cooler temperatures are actually in the reds. And one thing you'll notice is because our temperature uh, input raster was a much larger spatial resolution. It was 800 meter pixels. Um, you can see the kind of imprint of those larger temperature pixels where all of our 10 meter water pixels now share a constant temperature value that were all taken from a single pixel of the temperature raster. So it's a coarse temperature data set. So now in our final move, uh, what we wanna do is take a look at these temperature values. Obviously we've got them displayed as a map here, but let's export them into a text file so that we can uh, work with them. So to do that, we're gonna use the raster layer unique values report. Um, we're gonna set our layer to output. This is the, the masked temperature map we just made. 
band one is good. And we'll just send it to a temporary file. Hit run. This should be very fast. And this actually comes out basically as an HTML file. So it's called unique values report. It should show up in a box over here. You can double click it and it opens up in a web browser. And here's what we've got. We've got uh, lists of temperature values on our left right here, 22.6, 24.17. And we've got number of pixels in the second column that have that temperature. And then we've got the area, uh, which is in this case just three pixels times 100 meters squared per pixel gives us 300 meters squared uh, of the river or of the lake, excuse me, that has that temperature. So what we'll do now is just left click and hold and highlight all these values. Control C to copy and then open up an Excel file. And I've already put some headers into my Excel file here because I knew what was coming. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to paste special. This is very important. Uh, and I'm going to choose Unicode text. So that uh, formatting makes everything come out perfectly in the correct columns. OK, so uh, let's say we want to visualize this data. Um, one nice way to do this is to visualize it as a cumulative area plot. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of the area below a certain temperature. So to do that, we'll use a simple formula in Excel. We always start formulas with equals. And then we'll use the word sum. And we're going to sum this pixel C2 through, through C2. And uh, importantly, we're going to click here and we're going to use F4 or you can manually enter in two dollar signs to hold that cell fixed. So what's going to happen is as we fill down, this cell is going to be adding up all the areas of itself and below. This cell is adding up all the areas of itself and below. And I'm going to just double click here and that's going to fill it all the way down. So if you go all the way down, you can see this is your total uh, area of water pixels, which we had established in a previous video, 217 million uh, meters squared. And so um, next thing we can do is basically plot this. And we're going to put temperature on the X. So we're going to select all of those values. And then we're going to put cumulative area on the Y. So we're going to select all these values. Then we're going to go to insert, scatter plot. I'll probably choose one with the, with the lines here. And you can see that uh, we start at about 22.5 and then things we pick up more area as we get uh, most of our pixels have temperatures between say 28 and 30 degrees C. I'm going to pause and format this plot. Okay so I cleaned up this plot I put it gave it some axes titles I put a log scale and now you can see um, that relatively little of the Lake Powell area um, has a July temperature below 28. And as you go up into kind of 28 to 30, 31, we get pick up most of that area. So final thing I'll do is suppose you wanted to see this as a percentage. Um, we'll type in another formula, which would be equals uh, the same formula. And actually, let's just go copy this to start off with, put this right in here, except this time we're going to divide it by the sum of C3 all the way down. So basically any given value will be the sum of all the areas below it divided by the total area. And we're going to again use dollar signs to hold those cell references fixed. 
I'm going to just double click the corner here to fill it down, reformat it so we can see it a little better. And as we go down, you'll see the percentages here you have 50% and 100%. So if you were to find this value, here we're saying that 50% uh, of the area of Lake Powell sits below 29.76 degrees Celsius. And we'll finish this video by uh, basically making a plot of that. What I did there, I just copy pasted the whole plot. And now I'm just going to actually with this plot, my new plot highlighted, I'm just going to pull this over and um, then I'm going to format this axis again to be auto and I'm going to um, call this cumulative percent area. And we can still do more to uh, improve this. But one thing you could read off this graph is to say, if you wanted to know what was the 99th percentile temperature of Lake Powell, you could read that right off here. It's about, you know, 30.1 degrees. Thanks for listening and look forward to applying this to mapping of Greenland lakes in lab. Thanks.